Well, hello everybody and welcome to my uh, Twitch uh, stream. Today we're going to do some development. We're going to do some modding of the game Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes. I've already got the repo page up. And we're, today we're going to look at some modules which might use some souvenir support, which we are going to add. And here in Visual Studio I already have souvenir open, so we can dig right in. Uh, hopefully this will work well. So let's just pick a random module. I prefer to start at the bottom because, um, you know, the older modules have been waiting the longest time to get souvenir support. But I also want to start with something relatively simple. Let's see what Nonogram says. Souvenir could ask about the color combination of each row and column. Need to check if interaction after solve is blocked. All right, so I guess we do need to check that. Um, um, let me just quickly check something. Okay, so I'm going to try out Nonogram to see if interaction after solve is indeed blocked. So to do that, I'm going to look for Nonogram in my Steam folder. I'm going to copy this folder into my mods folder. And I guess I can delete that for now. And I can also delete that because I'm subscribed to it. So that's fine. Uh, this is Nonogram. And then I'll run the game. And we're going to solve a nonogram uh, by cheating, basically, by looking at the log file, which is here. Um, I probably want to close all the other files I have here, so let's close all of these. Right, and let's oh, let's run. Well, let's use the bomb creator here. Let's run a bomb with just one module. There it is. That does look like a uh, nonogram. Very good. Right, let's take a look. So this is what the solution should be. Click, click, click. Click, 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 click. Click, 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 click. Yep. Oh, I see. Oops. Right, that is not what I intended. So let's try that again. I should have just pressed the submit button because I'm just too much of a uh, playful uh, let's see. And now I totally forgot that... Okay, so the colors do disappear and I cannot retrieve them by pressing the exclamation point. I hope that this uh, is true of solved modules even if the entire bomb isn't solved. So just to make sure that that is the case, that if you solve just one module and not the entire bomb, Right, so which one is it? It's the one where row one is yellow and purple. That is this one. That one has orange, so it's not that one. Right, so we're looking for nanogram two, so it's this one. Click, 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 click. All right. It's solved, okay, and it does not allow Interaction, so that's good. So we can ask about the colors. All right, let's start. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find out how Nonogram works. And for that, ordinarily I would look at the source code, but Nonogram doesn't have source code. So I'm going to use a decompiler to access the source code. And um, so to do that, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to the uh, uh, Nonogram folder I just created. Here's the Nonogram module DLL it has this. And so this is the entire source code for the nonogram module. I need to figure out where the colors are decided and then where they are stored. So it looks like on activate there is a method called prepare module, which checks if the, if the serial number is even, which makes sense. And then Okay, what is this? Ah. Mm, okay. Colors. So this dot colors sounds like it will contain these strings. Yellow, orange, for example. And I'm guessing rand reverse will either use the original or, yeah, just reverse it. So sometimes it's yellow, orange, and sometimes orange, yellow. Um... So to make sure that this is indeed what I expect it to be, I'm going to check 
that the um, that that when the materials are assigned for the objects, that it will in fact use this colors array. Uh, so this is the logging log format. These are the clues. Okay, so where where would the um where would the material? So let's let's look. Let's search for material. Clear button, grid button, dot fill. Okay, this is where the grid positions inside the grid are changed. And um, bingo on the toggle. Uh, the light toggle, dot toggle. Yeah, it should, it's probably light toggle. There we go. Get grid color. So it does use the colors array, which is a list of strings. And then a boolean, which is either, you know, use either the first or the second. And then this one, bingo, yep. It uses either the first or the second. It uses, it says two here because the string has a space in it for some reason. But yeah. So, okay. <laughs> okay, so R is red, B is blue, G is green, Y is yellow, O is orange, P is purple, and then there is N, which is off-grid color. I'm not quite sure what that is, but looking at the nonogram manual, it seems that red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple is all there is that can appear on the module. So let's, let's assume that that's it, because I've never seen anything else on the module. All right, so we're going to start. Uh, by adding nonogram to this long list. Uh, we put that here, nano, whoops, not maybe, nanogram. Now here we need, as, as, this, um, as this comment explains, these are the module type property. So in the case of nonogram, I don't know offhand what it is, and unfortunately the uh, decompiler can't tell me that either. But fortunately, the mod selector in the game can, so I'm going to run the game again, just to take a look at the mod selector. So we go to mod settings, no, not mod settings, mods info, nonogram. Uh, it's nonogram module. Nonogram module. All right, let's close that again. So this is what it is. And then there is a second list inside um, start, I believe. Yep, there we go. M N. Here we go, nonogram, process nonogram. Now this name here, process nonogram, is a reference to a method. There are tons of methods, one for each um, uh, supported module. And so we're just going to add a new one for the nonogram module. And each of these start with a few uh, commands here to retrieve the component, which is the uh, the instance of this very class that I'm looking at here. So this time it's the name of the class that we want, which happens to be the same in the whoops, which happens to be the same in the case of nonogram, but it's often different for some um, modules. And then we want the colors field, which is uh, this one here, this one. All right. So first of all, the name is colors. The type is list of string. And the name is colors. And ordinarily, I mean, if, if it were a public field, you would go is public true. But in this case, it's not public. It's actually private. So we don't do that. All right. And then that's it. That's all we need. All right. Let's make, change this to FLD colors. Now, we might also need to see if the module is solved. So let's see if there is a solved um, okay, so let's see what happens when you press the toggle button. Uh, not toggle, I meant submit button. Can interact, that's what it's called. So let's, let's see, let's see where this is assigned. Analyze. See where this is assigned. All right, so it is first assigned in prepare module, which means that it starts out with false, gets set to true during module activate. And then later when you submit the module and you're successful, it gets um, set back to false here. All right, I see it, it sets it to false immediately, even though at this point it will probably still, um, you know, verify the module, does the sort of animation and then maybe give you a strike. So I'm guessing that, there we go, that if you do get a strike, it will set it back to true so you can interact with it again. But if you solve the module, if you pass the module, then it does not do that. 
this means this means that we cannot rely on can interact to find out if the module is solved. So I'm going to do it differently. And in fact, there is actually a fairly easy way to do this, which I didn't think of in the past. So my previous souvenir development video did not include this. Um, so I'll just show you how to do that. So first of all, let's wait for one frame to ensure that the module is initialized. The start method and the awake method are run. Now we're going to hook into the um, uh, modules solve handler. So we are going to say is solved. It's not solved at the start. And then we're going to say that the module on pass, that, that's what it is, the modules on pass handler. So on pass is a delegate that gets called when the module is solved. All right. So as long as the module itself or any other um, process doesn't overwrite this delegate, then uh, this will happen. So we can set is solved to true in, inside the delegate. And then we'll just um, wait until is solved. OK, so why is there an error? Not all code paths return a value. So I'm guessing that requires a return type. It requires a bool. OK. Um, hmm. Not quite sure what I'm supposed to return in there. So if, if I try and return false. OK, well, this is weird because I don't remember having to do this when I did the OK, I'm going to take a look at something, something that uh, that is called manipulator. And this is something that I created just to create a puzzle. And oh, I see it was on activate where I did this before, not on pass. That's why this is different. OK, that makes sense. Never mind. Well, in that case, I will try return false and hopefully that will um, uh, not cause any issues. Now, this will wait until it's solved. So once it's solved, we're going to do this increment, which I've explained in a previous video. So go and look at previous videos to find out what this is. But it is important. You do need to do this after the module is solved in order to let Souvenir know that the module is solved. Because imagine you have two or more nanograms on the same bomb. Uh, Souvenir needs to be able to say, you know, the nanogram that you solved first versus the nanogram that you solved second. So what this does is it increments a value so that the nanograms uh, can be counted as they are solved. All right, so now we want to retrieve the colors. So let's take a look at the FLD colors uh, field. In fact, I'm going to check just to make sure. Uh, I, I want to see at which points this gets assigned. Uh, just to make sure that it doesn't like, you know, remove the uh, the data when the module is solved, which I suppose could happen, but it turns out it doesn't. It will assign an empty list here, and then the list, as we've seen before, gets added to. Um, so let, let's see where the list is used. It is only used in light toggle and prepare module. So uh, here we have all these add commands, and there doesn't seem to be anything that clears the list. Yep, up to the end of the method, there is no colors.clear or colors.remove. And presumably this one also, yeah, it just reads from the list. It doesn't remove anything from it. So we can be pretty confident that the colors are still there. Um, but of course, to be absolutely certain, I want to make sure that everything is as I expect. So if colors is null, for example, then we know that that's not what we expected. And the reason I do this is because even if the likelihood of a bug is fairly small, if there is a bug, then I want Souvenir to just skip the module, skip the question, and just mark itself solved, rather than becoming unsolvable. Right? It should not ask a question that is unanswerable. And it should not get stuck in an infinite loop and just keep waiting um, and make it impossible to solve the bomb. So and that's why I do this. So I expect the colors array to be not null. And I also expect its count to be exactly equal to, uh, let's find out. So here, when this, when this is prepared, um, we have, it's probably in a loop, clues.count. 
Okay, so clues don't count. Uh, that's another list, so we need to find out what clues gets uh, what gets added to clues. So let's let's find out where this is red. Um, generate puzzle. Um, right, clues. Right, there is a clear here, so that is when it's when it generates the puzzle at the start. So that's that's good. That's where it should clear. Um, and then it does an add for every column and rows dot link. You know what? At this point, I think. Um, no, I I still need to. Yeah, I still need to make sure that it is what I expect. But at this point, I mean, we we can be. I mean, the fact that it says column and rows here means that the clues array has a separate entry for every column and a separate entry for every row. So now all we need to know is which one comes first: is it rows first or columns first? So in order to find that out, I am going to just output a log format, uh, a log message for a souvenir, monogram. Um, colors are and then one. All right, so we have our module ID and then we have colors join string comma. So now we will get a comma separated list. I'm going to put this in square brackets so you can better see the list, right? And then this will just end and not ask any questions. So now let's open this in Unity so that I can recompile this. I probably should have opened Unity before I started this, but I didn't. Okay, so let's load this. Souvenir right there at the top. All right, let's recompile this. And you will notice that a new folder called Souvenir appears in my mods folder. And uh, after a few seconds, it will have built the module. And then I can run the game. And now I will do a two module bomb with uh, no duplicates. So we'll have exactly a nonogram and a souvenir on it. Not that, that. So two modules, no duplicates, click. And now let's open the log file to see what they, oh, turns out we have two nonograms. That probably means that I have a profile active. Let's see what's active. Ah. Right, some things were active there. Let's make sure that this one doesn't disable anything. And, whoops, let's go back in. Okay, so here we have a bomb and it has a nonogram and a souvenir. And the souvenir isn't marked as solved yet, so it probably, it, it's probably successful in waiting for the, uh, for the nonogram to get solved. So let's um, just put in the solution for this. Okay, now before I submit this, I'm going to take a copy of this information because that is what we expect. And then I submit. All right. And here we go. So this is what the array is. So it said orange and purple here, and we have purple, orange. And it said green and orange, we have green and orange. Orange and purple, blue and orange. I'm surprised that they're not in the same order as they're here, which means that the colors array contains the original set of colors rather than the ones shown on the module. Um, but that's okay. You know, we can just ask, I mean, we can have Souvenir just ask, you know, what were the two colors or what was one of the two colors? Yeah, I think I'll make it one of the two colors and then just simply not have the other one as a possible option. All right. Now, sorry to keep you waiting, but I'm mixing myself a little drink here because my mouth is a little dry. Hopefully, uh, you will forgive me because it means that I can stream for a bit longer to keep you guys entertained. Okay, let's go back. So here we have our souvenirs. So now we know what the colors are. I'm going to comment that out. So now we are going to add questions for the module. And these questions are, there's going to be a question, one question for each color. 
All right, so now that we know what this is, we know that it's going to be 10 clues because you know it's five columns and five rows. So I can say if colors.count is not equal to 10, whoops, I want you to yield break, but I also want to output an error message such as this. I usually say abandoning and then the name of the module um, uh, because colors has unexpected length expected 10. All right, so the actual length is uh, colors.count. I suppose at this at this point I can also make sure that all of the right or so if it's not exactly 10 or any of them don't follow a certain specific uh, uh, pattern. So the pattern that I want is that we have a color which is uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, then a space and then another one of these. And I want that to be exactly right. So if any of them does not match that, then abandoning you know, because cards is unexpected length, open parenthesis, that snake unexpected 10, or an unexpected entry. Uh, so let's just output the list here where we say just join string comma. And, and then if that happens, we'll be able to see in the list what it contained and uh, and then we'll be able to debug that. All right, so now we need to create an entry in our question enum where we have all of these questions uh, listed that we already have. So we're dealing with uh, nonograms, so we're gonna have to find the alphabetical place, which is here. So we're gonna ask a souvenir question, nonogram colors. Right, what was the, what was one of the colors in the, first, second, third row or column in nanogram, nanogram. All right, there are six possible colors. So I'm actually gonna have all six and they are called red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, blue, and purple. No, <laughs> Pur I just typed pur purpose, all right, purple. Okay, now for this one and two thing, we want to specify an example, um, example format arguments. So the one could be uh, first, second, you know what, actually, I can just make that one string and it'll just say like first column, second column, first row, second row. Now, obviously, it could say, you know, anything up to fifth row, but this is just examples, right? And then the group size is one. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just putting some examples there so that when you run the souvenir module in Unity, uh, I, can, I cannot show this now because there is a comp. Ah, I can just comment that out and then I can show you that. All right, so in Unity, uh, for the purpose of, you know, knowing what it looks like, uh, on on the on the bomb, I have it made so that I can click this to scroll between the different questions. So these are the 3D maze questions, which is of course alphabetically first. 3D tunnels, adventure game, etc. So this is how I can know what they look like. Also, if you're wondering why there are these numbers one, two, three, four, those occur only in Twitch plays. If I go to the test harness and turn off turn off uh, the Twitch play support, then you will see that these numbers are not there. And now the highlight also aligns perfectly with the answers. All right, so now if I mo move forward, you can see that I can go through them. But um, yeah, nonogram will be a, a bit a bit further further down the line. But we don't really need that right now. Um, so the only reason I'm showing you this is because these example format arguments are for that. Okay, so that if you really do need to look at the question, you at least get a question that looks just like the questions on a real bomb. But when the question for the real bomb is formulated, which is done by this code here, rather than by this, these examples, it'll be constructed in exactly the same way. So we'll be putting in a string like this, except that it could also say third, fourth, or fifth. All right, so with all that explanation out of the way, uh, we probably want a, uh, a dictionary 
to translate between these single letter codes uh, to the names of the um, colors. Hello there, I see that someone posted in the chat. Hello, Striker Boom. I hope you're enjoying the stream. And uh, pay good attention because there's going to be a the test after. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> all right, so we probably don't need that anymore. Okay, so I'm going to add questions. So we're going to have, well, actually, let's just go colors.select. So for each entry in the colors array, which gives me a color, which is two colors, right? It's a, um, it, it's a, a character, a space, and another character. And also an index, which will tell me, you know, whether it's row or column and which row or column. Um, I was about to... <laughs> yes, yeah, there will be a test afterwards and you are going to fail it. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so we want to make a question on the nonogram colors. The module key is this um, nonogram constant. This is the thing that we declared here. This is the module type value. All right, then we want the format arguments. Now, the format arguments are the things that go in for the curly bracket one and also two, three, etc. Um, so in this case, we want first column, second column, etc. So we want the ordinal version of the index, except it's the index percent five, right? So for the first five, we now have a number from zero to four. And then for the next five, we have a number from zero to four. So we need to go plus one because we want first to fifth, not zero to fourth. And then plus now, if the index is greater than a greater or equal to five, then it's rows, I believe. So let's check this. So we have, yep, that's right. The column clues are first orange, purple, green, orange, orange, purple. And then the row clues are last blue, orange, yellow, purple. Yes. Okay. So that means that if it's greater or equal to five, then it's a row. Otherwise, it's a column. All right, so that is the one format argument we need, but because there could be multiple, it needs to be an array, so we need to enclose it in this. And now for the correct answers. Now there are always two correct answers, right? So color, which we know is a string with a character, a space, and another character. So we're gonna split this at the space, which will give us two elements. And then each of those elements, we're going to look them up in a dictionary, which is what I mentioned earlier. So var color names, we're going to create a new dictionary from string to string. Um, and in this dictionary, we have all the names. So R is red, uh, green, blue, yellow, purple, and orange. So red, orange, yellow, um, GB means green, blue, and purple. All right, so we will use that dictionary to, um, uh, so for each color value, we're gonna go color names C. So that will translate the single character name to the full name like red or orange. And then we want to turn that into an array. So now we have an array of two elements, which are the two possible colors. And then it says preferred wrong answers. Well, we don't need any of those because there are only uh, six possible answers and they're all listed here. It will just use these six. In, except it will use only five of them because one of them, because it will, yeah. Hmm. This is interesting. This is a case that we haven't had yet, but I'm fairly confident that this will work. So I hope that it'll work. So what will happen is that it will always have two possible answers. For example, this one here has purple or orange, but it can't show two possible answers. So it has to remove one of them from the possibilities. So it will show all except orange. And when the correct answer is purple or all except purple, if the correct answer is orange. All right. So that's that. And um, okay, so that's the end of the make question call. So now we go close parenthesis to end the dot select, and then close parenthesis for the add questions and the semicolon. And make sure. Okay. Ah, there we go. It accepts an I enumerable. So that should work. All right. So let's let's actually try that. Let's go to Unity and recompile this. Strike Kaboom says, would love to learn how to do this. I'm trying to make a mod and this stuff just scares me. Um, 
Okay, <laughs> no, don't worry about the interruption, that's fine. Uh, but using this stream for learning to like generally mod the game contain is probably not a good idea because you know I'm doing souvenir specifically, which is a little more advanced. Um, so I'm not sure if you're gonna learn much for you know in particular you're not gonna learn any modeling here today because <laughs> uh, you know souvenir already has all of its modeling. Now let's take a look. So you're gonna have two modules in this bomb. Elementary, my dear expert. All right, let's see if there's anything else. Nope, okay, here is a nonogram. Let's solve the nonogram. Click, 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 click. And that. Okay, so the top row is purple and blue. The top row was purple and blue. Click, all right. So here in the log file, it will show all of the questions that could potentially have come up. And for the first row, it says purple and blue is indeed missing among the answers. So that's working just fine. All right, so the question it's actually asking is what was one of the colors in the first column? And the first column had, uh, so gr it expects green as the answer, but we can see here in the logging that column A had blue and green. So green is there and blue is missing indeed. So there we go. So that's nonogram added. So let's see what else we can add. Flags. I am tempted to do flags as well. Although I'm not entirely sure whether I want to include the sprites for all the flags or whether I want to show just the, the, the names of the countries. There are some countries such as United Kingdom which has a fairly long name. So if you imagine United Kingdom showing on the bottom of the uh, screen here, right? If we, if we go here and so just to show you this, if I were to um, go answer to answer text, right? So if I put United Kingdom here, you'll see that it's clearly too long. So what the um, what souvenir will actually do then is it will scale it down so that it will fit, right? So it'll look something like this. Actually, probably yeah, even more. Yeah, probably even more. <laughs> it'll probably do this, right? And it will fit, but you can see that it's it's fairly squeezed and therefore a little hard to read. So what we can do instead, and I'm you know I'm I'm looking forward to showing showing you guys how to do this. So I think I'm going to do this. Use the sprites for the flags. Now, fortunately. Um, you may have noticed that again the source code icon here is missing but fortunately I actually have a copy of the flags module which uh, Pigger did actually publish at some point he just removed the source code from github at some point but um, I actually have it right here and it has um, flags right here there are textures and here they all are so I can use these and if we go here to the prefab for the souvenir module and we scroll down a little, you'll notice there are already some sprites here. So we have the ones for planets, we have the ones for perspective pegs, which by the way, you know, they're not actual pegs, but rather there's some kind of graphics that show. Let me just very quickly uh, show you what these look like, All right? So they are, you know, they, they're pictures of the five. Um, pegs, but one of them is highlighted in red and there is an arrow pointing at it. So um, that's what perspective pegs is. All right, so for flags, I am going to add a new folder here. So create a folder, flags, and then open that in Explorer. Yeah, go, go in there and then copy all of these flags here. Except I'm going to delete all of these meta files and have. Uh, Unity create new ones. And there we go. And here are all of these flags. All right. Let's see. They need to be marked as sprites. Okay. Uh, now let's click apply. And okay. It, nothing seems to happen, but you know, that's normal. 
I'm just going to make sure that, you know, this is similar. The pixels per unit is different. It is 200 here and 100 here. I'm not entirely sure what the ramifications of that are, but don't worry about that. We will uh, look at that later. So now we're going to declare a new sprite array here and call it flags sprites. And then that flag sprites thing will appear here. Three, two, one, bang. There we go. So now I'm going to, uh, yeah, let's open this up. Let's lock this so that the inspector uh, for the module stays here while I select these here in the list. And then I can copy them to here. Well, not copy, but, you know, drag them to here. All right, so now they're all here. Um, all right, so apply, save. Um, now then, let's take a look at the flags source code, which I have here. Contain flags uh, assets um, flags flags module dot cs. All right, so that one has a texture array for the flags. Uh, so let's take a look how uh, that is used. These are all comments. Um, ah, okay. Main texture, then that makes sense. So this is where it sets the main flag. And then we have a main country dot country ID. Now main country is of type country. So I'm guessing there's probably a country dot CS somewhere. All right, you know what? I'm going to open another Visual Studio and open the flag modules in here so that I can properly um, oh, there is no solution file there, which means I have to open it in Unity. So let's do that. Mm. Okay. Hello, everyone. What was the thing that hasn't popped up yet? Ah. Okay, I will explain that because that's pretty interesting. So what happened is that I have a, um, a souvenir question with only six possible answers because there are six possible colors in nonograms. So here I list all six of these, right? But because nonogram always has two possible colors in every row and every column, one of those colors is going to be the right answer. But then the other one, which would also be a right answer, has to be removed. And this means that out of those six, only five will appear on the module. And one of those five is the correct answer. In this case has not occurred yet, but my coding has um, dealt with it correctly. So we, we tested this in game and it worked correctly. It showed just five of the answers. Among them, the correct answer. All right. Um, is this taking a moment? I suppose I should probably, I, I, I opened two copies of Souvenir in two separate Visual Studios. All right, let's go to flags and open the flags module thing. Now, what was I looking for? I was looking for the country type. All right, so here we go. So, ah, it's, it's right there at the top of the file. I could have just scrolled up. Oh, okay, whatever. All right, so it's a type with several properties. Each of these are properties, not fields. So we're going to have to use those, but that's okay. We can do that. Let's go, um, first of all, here. I need, right, so first of all, let's actually go to the, um, whoops. Let's actually copy the module to the uh, mods folder so that I can run it in the game. We don't need nonogram anymore. I'm fairly confident that's working. And now let's run the game to find out what the um, uh, module ID, or rather the module type for flags is. Um, all right, let's take a look. Mods info flags. Um, flags module. All right. The, I, I hope that this is the right one. It sounds like it is. I think the first one is the name of the game object in Unity, and the second one is the um, module type. Okay, flags module. 
All right, so then here in the second list, we go here, we have flags, process, oh fuck, process flags, and then we go here, private enumerable object, process flags, came bomb module, module there. All right, and then let's copy one of these. Uh, so what is the component called? We can see that here is called flags module. You know, now that I think about it, and now that I have flags open in uh, Unity, it occurs to me that I can actually just check the module type here. And as you can see, it is in fact, ooh, it is in fact flags module rather than just flags. And flags is indeed the name of the game object, which is this bit here. So I was right. So in, for, for, for future, you will know that the uh, module ID in the mod selector is actually the module type, which is what we want. All right, so I'm going to reopen Souvenir now and not save any of these changes. All right, um, we want the main flag, we want the digit shown, and we want the other flags. So we need to find out where they all are. We already know that main flag, no, it's main country, isn't it? Yes, that's right, it's called main country. So let's... Uh, get the main country, and that one is private. Okay, now, here's the thing. Usually we put the type of the field here. So if it's an int, we put int. If it's string, we put string. But in this case, it's country, and we can't put country here because, you know, obviously a souvenir doesn't know about the country type. It will say the type or namespace name country cannot be found. All right, so what we have to do instead is we have to put object, and then we have to deal with the properties of that object separately. I will show you how to do how we will do that in a second. All right, so the countries are in this list. Oh, come on. I wanted to copy that. Countries get field. All right. Now, this is a list of countries. So again, we can't put list of country and unfortunately we also can't put list of object. It just doesn't work that way. But what we can do is we can put i list because this is something that list of a country implements. So we can get the count of objects and we can retrieve each of the objects as an object. And then we can deal with it the same way that we will deal with this. All right, so the name here is obviously countries. And why does it say numbers? Shouldn't there be just one number? Or maybe this is the number. All right, let's find out. Let's find out where and how this is used. Number. Oh, number display. Great. Let's see what number display is set to. Bingo. It is set to the string version of number, which means that number is the number. We can see where number is assigned. Number is assigned a number from 1 to 7. That makes sense. That is exactly what it should be. And, um, and, and then it is never assigned again, which means that even once the module is solved, it still has that value. Okay, so let's, um, uh, let, let's go back to souvenir here. All right, so we want the number, which at this point we can say is an int. And we're just going to say number, and this one is also private. All right, so now if comp equals null or main country equals null or countries equals null or fld number equals null, then you'll break. All right, so the next thing we want to do. So first of all, I'm going to yield return a null just to make sure that the start method has run, which will assign the uh, main country and the list of countries. And then once we have that, we can look at that object and get its properties. All right, so let's find out where main country is actually assigned. As we can see here, it's assigned in start. Start is where it's assigned. So that means that once, once this yield return null comes back, start will have run and main country will have been decided on. So um, I don't think that flags uh, resets to a different country when you um, get a strike. But just to make sure, we can see if the method start is called anywhere else, and we find that it isn't. So that means it is called only once at the start of the module, and therefore this um, you know all of these things are assigned only once, and especially the main country and the the list of countries, which of course is assigned here, I mean, is uh, populated is the term. All right. So, so the main 
country is going to be the value here. The countries are going to be fld countries that get. And then of course the number is fld number. Now if main country equals null or countries equals null, then it will have already output an error message, so we just yield break. If uh, countries dot count is not equal to, we expect that to be exactly seven. There are always seven non-main countries on the bottom. Right, so if that is the case, then we're gonna output an error message saying um, abandoning flags because countries has length something expected seven. Right, and the actual length is countries.count. All right, now if uh, number is less than one or greater than seven, then we have a similar situation where we want to, uh, hmm. right, okay, we want to get the value for the number, that's what, that's what went wrong. Abandoning the flags because number has unexpected value, expected one to seven number. Okay. Now, the main country is a, uh, um, an instance of this class, which has a name. It, it unfortunately it does not have a reference to the texture. You know, it would be kind of, and and besides, we don't actually want a texture. We want a sprite. So never mind. So for a brief moment there, I I considered whether we could actually reuse the sprites from the module, so we wouldn't have to include our own copies of the flag sprites. But um, uh, you know, we can't because Nonogram uses textures rather than sprites, and I don't quite know what the difference is. But we can't use one for the other. So anyway. What we want is, so country code, I'm guessing, is the dialing code. Uh, yes, that is the dialing code. And country ID, uh, country info, country info, where's country info assigned? Oh, interesting. It deserializes a JSON. JSON info. Okay, text asset. All right, so that's something that the um, uh, the the property inspector in Unity will contain. Okay, so if we go here, then we can find the uh, JSON info. There we go. Ha! Huh. All right, country info, country info. Bingo. That's where it is. Can I? Why doesn't it let me copy this? Uh, show in Explorer. Right, just open that. Okay. So they do not actually have IDs. You notice that there is no country ID value here. So I'm a little confused right now. But let's see what this is used for. Ah, ah I see. Okay, so it assigns the ID. Okay, I see, I see. Numbers, random dot range. No, okay, I see. Okay, so what it does is it takes all of the numbers from you know zero to the number of flags minus one, and then it finds the flag at that index, and then gives it that index as its country ID, and then removes that index from the list, right? And then it does the same with these countries here. So they will all have the index within that that numbers list which, hmm. all right, and then it just uses that ID to index into the list of flags. That's actually pretty good programming. I'm, I'm really impressed with that. You see, this way it doesn't, it doesn't identify the textures by name. It knows exactly where the textures are. So, um, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to break with that. I'm going to use the country names because, you know, it, it's just more um, robust that way because that way I can make sure that I have a sprite of the right name. And if I don't, you know, I can bail out and make sure that it doesn't ask an invalid question or show an invalid sprite or anything. Excuse me. <clears throat> so I'm going back to souvenir. 
and I'm going to make sure that all of the country names are um, that there are sprites with those names. Okay, so we need to first of all we need to obtain these properties, specifically this property country name. All right, so var um, property country name equals get property. We want to get a property from the main country object that is named country name and is public. All right, you can see here that it's public. All right, so now we can ooh, get pro oh I see we need the type. The type is a string. There we go. Okay, um, now we have the property. Now we need to retrieve the actual name. So of our main country name equal equals country name dot get from no get get hmm all right so let me tell you why I just type get from you see if this one here has a get from and this is a field and the one I'm working with is a property so I'm going to have to create a get from that works on properties so let me just quickly show you what happens here what happens is that field info encapsulates the field as well as the object that we got the field from so for the module we will have the you know the, the instance that uh, that pertains to the module in here but in this case now we have multiple objects one for every country and we want to retrieve a value for the same property in each of these different objects so that's what i had this get from thing for but apparently whoops apparently i implemented that only for fields not for properties so i'm going to go down here for property info where we have a get and i'm going to insert a get from all right so object obj and um, bar t equals um, property dot get value. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So the complication here is that a property, right? So this method here is intended for properties that are just, um, you know, just properties. It, it, basically, all of these are normal properties that that this would be used for. Right, but there are some properties which uh, take an index. These are so-called indexers. So, for example, an array has such a property, so you can use the square brackets on that. All right. So, I'm I'm actually going to do the same thing here for get from. So, I'm going to have an object, and then I'm going to have an object array for the indexes. And uh, so, then the property dot get value will take the index, and then it will complain if the property is null. Uh, and the property pro property has a name, a declaring type, yada yada, and then here we can just return get from obj null uh, null allowed. Okay. Now let's get back to where we were. We were looking at the prop country name. There we go, and then we get this from uh, main country. Now, ironically, at this point, actually, I could have just said get because, you know, I already passed the main country object in here. But I'm going, I'm still going to do this because I'm going to do the same thing with the other countries. And, you know, it's better form to uh, use the same uh, style throughout. So var other country names is going to be countries. Oh, yeah, and I should probably change this back. Uh, so for each of the countries, ah, I see. So countries is actually this I list thing that I mentioned. So at this point, we have to cast all of its uh, contents to object first before we can use dot select. So for each country, we are going to uh, use the country name property, get the value from that country, and then turn that into an array. Right now, um, if not flag sprites in fact let's let's get the main country sprite equals that first or default so we want to find a sprite whose name uh, is equal to the main country name and similarly for the other country you know what i'm just gonna put other country sprites um and and same here you know i'm just uh, 
yeah so uh, prop country name so country 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 uh, so this is the name of the country so I'm gonna go flag sprites first or default sprite whose name equals that and then turn that into an array so now that's an array of, of uh, sprites all right and now I can do the same thing here so that can just go here so I don't need that now if the main country sprite is null or other country sprites any of those is null uh, then we're gonna have to have any flags because one of the whoop, because one of the countries has a name with no corresponding sprite main country equals that other countries equals this other list All right so the main country is um, prop country name get from main country and then the others you know at this point yeah actually it doesn't matter all right so let's do this uh, so now instead of turning it into an array I'm going to put commas in between so I get a list and instead of getting the flags I'm just gonna get the name in here like that okay that should do it all right and then of course you'll break so now that we have that I should probably check something because I noticed that um, all of the countries that have a space in their name like United Kingdom if you look at the list of the sprites which I'm gonna go back to souvenir um, the sprites actually have underscores so it wouldn't actually match because the space in the underscore obviously is not the same thing but fortunately we can just rename the sprites we can just change the underscores to spaces so that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna change that to a space I'm gonna change that to a space gonna change that to a space gonna change that to a space and I believe United Kingdom is the last one um, yes Okay, that should do it. Uh, where were we? We were here. Okay, so now that we know that this is a valid sprite, these are valid sprites. Um, we also need the number. Yeah, we already have the number. The number is just an integer, so there's, <laughs> we don't need a sprite for that. So, let's add some questions. In fact, let's, let's create a uh, list so we can just add, add questions. So first of all, uh, display number, uh, make a question on the uh, flags uh, displayed number. Right, let's create that enum member and let's put it in the correct alphabetical place, which is here, FL, there you go. That deserves a comma. So many question, what was the display number in? flags and uh, of course it could be any of the numbers uh, one two three four five six or seven uh, whoops I mistyped that right which means we have that okay and this doesn't require any um, any of those example format arguments because we don't have a square bracket sorry we don't have a curly bracket one we only have a zero which gets replaced with that so so we're good Right, then we want flags main country. Oh, how come some of the abandoned messages souvenir... Oh, oh, did I make... The oh, thank you for pointing that out. You are absolutely right. They should use angle brackets because I don't want those to appear in the main log. I want those to appear only in the filtered log. It's not that I want them to be secret or anything, because obviously anyone can still look at the filtered log. It's just that these are technical. Uh, this is technical information that only the programmer finds useful. So you know, in in the main log, it is more useful for the user to see something like there wasn't a question for flags. This indicates a bug. Please send this log file to Tim Wee, and then Tim Wee can look at the filtered log. All right. So that that's why it's angle brackets. For, for almost all of these. Alright. I wasn't looking at stream, it just seems inconsistent throughout the file. 
Um, it's not supposed to be inconsistent, but uh, I mean, there are some messages that use the square brackets, and those are the messages that I want to appear on the uh, main log. Things like, for example, uh, this question was asked, this is the answer that you clicked, uh, was that correct or wrong? Um, and, and things like, for example, there was no question generated for a particular module for a particular reason. All right, so we have a main country and then um, nice countries, I guess. Right, so for the main country, what was the main flag in flags? The main let's call it country flag. All right. Now here, I'm going to say that the answer type, um, it's type, isn't it? Yep, type. There you go. Type equals answer type dot sprites. Okay. And we want, we need to put a null here so that this all answers array is null rather than an empty array. Because if it were an empty array, then it would be, um, uh, you know, it would mean there aren't any valid answers. But null means that I will supply those answers separately, which I will in the form of a list of sprites. So that's good. Um, and then, of course, countries. Uh, which of these country flags was shown? Which of these country flags was shown, but not the main <laughs> country flag? in flags. All right, uh, that should work. Um, it might be worth doing a search for, yeah, I suppose. Um, souvenir hash, there you go. Um, that is okay, that is okay, that is okay, that is okay, that is okay. Abandoning arithmetic logic. Thank you. That is a very good point, no question. Uh, that is good, that is good. Functions. Okay, let's replace all of these. Um, all right, uh, that was functions, then Griffins has that. Uh, Schlag den Baum has that. I, I literally, honestly, I had no idea that uh, so many of these had the wrong brackets. Uh, good, that is good, that is good. Uh, that is good. Abandoning. <laughs> That's ironic. Abandoning souvenir. Yes. Uh, and then there is some more here. All right. So thank you very, very much for pointing that out, River. Um, is really cool that we have that correct. But so just to give an example, so this is one that I do want to be a square bracket because this explains to the user why no question was generated for Yahtzee. You know, this is the actual reason, which is useful information to the user. So that one gets the square brackets. It's basically all of the times that I add to this legitimately no questions. You will notice that all of these are um, pre um, pre pre preceded by a log message with square brackets. You see all of these that that Oh, there was one that, ooh, that one doesn't have one. I should probably, oh, I see. <laughs> okay, that's because if you have only one souvenir module on the entire bomb, then, uh... oh, I see, no, this, this is not even for when there's only one, this is for when pr the souvenir tries to process itself. All right, so Souvenir tries to process all of the modules on the bomb, and one of those modules will be itself. And of course, it would be stupid if every single time one of the log messages said, ignoring Souvenir because there's only one of it on the bomb. You know, <laughs> we don't want that. So there's no uh, answer there. So get, let's get back to process flags. Here we go. OK, so we have display number. We have main country of countries. and they use sprites. Yeah, I think this should be good. So now we need to add these questions. So for the displayed number, the module key obviously is flags. The, there are no format arguments. So the correct answers are uh, the, the, the number, right? So number dot to string. And the uh, 
potential correct answers are already listed here. One, two, three, four, six, seven. So it'll choose six out of those, <laughs> uh, one of which is the right answer. And 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 so we don't we don't need to specify any preferred wrong answers uh, or anything else. All right. So that's the first one. Then the main country flag. So we're gonna add uh, main country. Okay, so this time we still don't have a format argument array because there's still no curly bracket one, but this time we're gonna use the sprite array thing. So the correct answers include the main country sprite. There you go. And preferred wrong answers, no, there aren't any. Well, actually, you know what? I am tempted to. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, I, sh I need to prefix this to tell it that this is correct answers. I am tempted to give it the um, the other country sprites as preferred wrong answers. This way, you know, I mean, this, this is traditional with some of the other modules that it will intentionally use answers that have come up somewhere else in the module. So, so let's do that. And then the uh, rest of the country flags for each var, um, yeah, for each var country. No, 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 no. We we only ask one question, which is which of these was in there. So it's actually only one question. So we're just gonna say uh, flags countries, flags. So now there are multiple possible correct answers, which is the um, country country sprites, other country sprites. All right. Yeah, and I, I guess that's it. All right, so now that we realize that there are only three, because you see, I expected that this was going to be a for loop, but it isn't. It's just a single question. So um, I'm not going to use this list. I'm just going to say add questions module, right? And then I can literally just list them here, comma, comma, and then close parentheses. All right, that should be it. Now, one thing that's still missing is we still need to wait before the module is solved. All right, so at this point here, we need to find. Um, so let's let let's see if there is a solved. No, there is not. So what happens when you press the? Let, let's see if there is any on interact on submit. Let's find the on submit. You know what? Why don't I just go here? Duh, on submit. I can go right here. Right, so can interact. Oh, it's the same as in nonogram. Let's see where can interact is. Oh, interesting. So it is initialized to true straight away, even in the uh, constructor, and it is only set to false when you actually solve the module. So this time we can actually use this to, um, uh, you know, to find out when the module is solved. So can interact equals get field, and it's a bool. Can interact. Is it public? Is it public? No, it is not public. I wouldn't have expected it to be public, but you can never be sure enough. All right, so there's that. And then here. Um, let me check at which point main country is assigned. I'm guessing it's during start. Yes, it is during start. Okay, that means we can actually get it right at the start of the. Uh, Wait, where am I looking? Oh, no, no. right. We can get it right at the start. But here, once we have it, we need to. Um, oh yeah. So here, while uh, can interact dot get uh, yield return new wait for seconds point one. Okay, so as soon as that becomes false, we know that the module is solved. So we're gonna ink this, which is flags, and then add the questions. All right. So with that out of the way, let's. Um, you know, I'm actually going to uh, wait. Wait. Um, I just realized something that with the um, sprites things. You notice here, I didn't specify the preferred wrong answers, but I just realized that I have to, because otherwise it doesn't know what sprites to use. So actually, I'm going to 
not use that. I'm just going to put flag sprites here. And then I have to do that here as well. Because otherwise, it will only show the flags that... Well, actually, may maybe that... Actually, I do want that. Yeah, you know what? I, that, that is what I'm going to do. Okay, so what this means is that if it asks about the main country flags, then the wrong answers will all be flags that appeared on the module. But if it asks about the rest of the country's flags, then they will all be random. And they could potentially contain the main flag by happenstance. But, um, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, bias it in that way. All right. So let's, let's compile this. All right, and by the way, this um, sort of testing that I showed you in the test harness earlier, the one that, you know, here where I can go through the questions, um, unfortunately, this doesn't work with sprites. I mean, it works with 3D tunnels because this is actually a specialized font. So these are actually font characters. But um, uh, this one here, for example, arithmetic logic, you see it, it'll just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 as an example. It doesn't use the actual arithmetic logic um, sprites, which would be this. Um, so that's why I, I can't show you them in the test harness, but I can show them to you in the game, and that's what I'm going to do now. All right, let's open the log file. Okay, we want two modules with no duplicates. Um, all right, that's good. Oh, I <laughs> It gave me two souvenirs, and I know why. It's because the uh, flags module is probably disabled in my temporary vetoes profile. So I need to, um, you know what, why, why do I even use that profile right now? Because, you know, I'm already quote-unquote vetoing everything by, by having only flags and souvenir in this folder in the first place. So I don't even need this veto. But just to check, yes, indeed, flags was disabled there. All right. ET, diffuse bomb. Right, so here's a flags module. That looks pretty cool. Um, let's take a look at this. Ignored modules. I don't want ignored modules, I want flat. There we go, answers Canada, which is number two. That one. All right, here we go. All right, that's what I suspected. These sprites are too large. All right, so... Um, Right, I could have tested that by changing the sprites right here. So for example, for this one here, sprite holder. Now it says example one right now, but I could have um, just put like a flag in here and then you immediately see it's too big. Now the way to fix this is to select all of these and to change the pixels per unit. So if I make that uh, smaller, you will see that the flag actually gets bigger, right? So that's a little counterintuitive, but the reason this happens is because it's pixels per unit, but the size is actually units per pixel because it's pixels in the sprites per unit in the world space, in the 3D coordinate space. So I actually want to make the number bigger in order to make the flag smaller. So let's experiment this with this a bit, set it to 300. Um, that's still too uh, big. So we need to make the number bigger. It's still too big. All right, this might fit, although it is a little, um, uh, you know, it's, it's close. So I'm, I'm going to make it just a little bit more, 550, and, and then test it in the game. There we go, and run the game. Right, let's see how to... Ah, you were working on Mahjong. That's cool. I, I saw that, by the way. That's part of the reason why I'm not doing Mahjong right now. <laughs> how many sprites in Souvenir use color? Uh, well, the Perspective Pegs, one which was the first sprite ever, uh, uses red color to highlight the uh, sprite. Um, I believe that the Planets sprites also use color. So, it's, it's not that this is new, so... Um, Panama. All right, that's Panama. 
What was the display number? Yeah, thank you for asking about the number right now. You know, I'm not even gonna press something because I just, I just want to start a new bomb. All right, what's the answer now? The answer is France. Haha! -ha! Oh, look at this. This is perfect. Well, I suppose it's not quite perfect. It could be slightly further to the right, but honestly, I'm not that fussed. Um, or am I? I'm such a perfectionist. I want to move them slightly to the right. Because you see, most of the other sprites are square or close to square. So they're in the middle of the thing. But th these are not square, so they expand in both directions. Um... Uh, let's go back to Unity and let's take a look. So if I, um, let's open all of the sprite holders. So this one is number four. Let's put, I don't know, Germany or something. Number five, Iceland or something. Number six, New Zealand or something. And then Algeria, right? Then Norway or whatever. And then Sweden is a cool country. Well, actually, I have three Nordic country now, so let, let's go Senegal. Senegal is nice and obscure. All right, so if I were to now simply move them slightly to the right, uh, I want to... Oh, 4.7 is a good number. Haha, <laughs> lol. All right, so let's uh, apply that. And now, unfortunately, because I made this change, I will have to test it with... Um, you know, with other sprites as well. So I'm gonna add um, perspective pegs to the mix. So let's take this. Copy that to here. And run the game. Oops. Okay, contain talk. Um, Ah, um, I apologize, you're right, actually, Module Maze was the first. You're completely right. Module Maze was first implemented with sprites by, by its author, and then I added sprites for perspective pegs and something else, which I've forgotten what, but... What else is on the menu besides flags? What menu? I'm not sure what menu you mean. Um, so let's do three modules. So flags is Brazil, and perspective pegs is um, top left, bottom left, top. Okay, see now these sprites are totally in the middle of that box, so my repositioning has uh, succeeded, I guess. Hmm. There's an interesting artifact on the right hand, on the bottom right of this, um, actually the top right has it too. I'm gonna have to take a look at that some other time. I'm gonna have to union those two. All right, so the correct answer for perspective bay, which was second in the solution, that was bottom left, wasn't it? And what was the main country flag? Ooh, I don't remember, I wonder what it was. Was it Sudan? Oh crap, I accidentally pressed the right answer. Um. Okay, by menu you mean the filter, right? You mean the list of modules that have the C on them. That's not really a menu. Um, so what else is on the menu? Right, okay, so here's how you can see the, uh, the, the, the list yourself. Just go to filters and, you know, normally all of these are on. So you can just turn these, whoop, turn these off and leave considered on and then you get a list of the ones that could have souvenir support but don't have it yet. And of course you can have just supported to get only the modules that have uh, support already. And you can also get a list of modules that we've deemed not a candidate. And then there are a few, you know, the very newest ones which we just haven't examined yet. All right. What is getting worked on today? But now I see I didn't make it clear enough. Well, to, you know, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not such an organized guy that I already have a list for that. I'm just doing them sort of one by one. 
Okay, so let's try this again and hope this time we get, um, yeah, you're gonna need one. All right, so the flag's answer is, um, okay, so first of all, perspective pegs is top left, bottom left, top. That's the same sequence as last time. And for the flags, the answer is Japan this time. Right, and the main flag is USA. Which peg was the same question as last time as well. Ah, oh, a number. Come on. Alright. Alright. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get a question that has the uh, flags for its answer and then I want to give a wrong answer. Right, so... Right, so this time... Uh, this time flags has Spain and perspective pegs has top, top right, top left. First was top. Alright, <sighs> display number again. So one in three chance and it always gives me the wrong one. Alright, now flags has Colombia. And perspective pegs has um, top right, top left, top. Third, top. Does it only ask about the... Let me see. Peg. No, it, it does add all three questions. I guess I just got unlucky. Right, come on. So once again, flags is Sweden this time. Perspective pegs is bottom left, bottom right, top left. What was the main country? Okay, the main country was Morocco. Okay, perfect. That's working perfectly. Um, the second solution, that was bottom left? No, it was not. It was bottom right. Hey, hey. All right, so that's working perfectly. I can close this now, I suppose. All right, let's close that. And uh, so that's support for flags done. And I suppose at this point, so I've, I've done two souvenir supports, so hopefully this has given you a bit of an idea of how to do this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, so first of all, let's go to the uh, JSON files for the main website and I can specify that souvenir is now supported, which means this is no longer necessary. And then for nonogram, I do the same thing. Update souvenir manual. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I already, yeah, I merged this. Uh, thank you, King Slendy, I guess. Um, so that's supported. Uh, let me just very quickly make sure that this is working fine. I'm gonna open this website locally and look at Nonogram and it says supported. This module is included in Souvenir. Refer to the Souvenir manual for details. So we're gonna have to update that Souvenir manual. Uh, let's close all of this. So the Souvenir manual is here and it's also here. Um, we want Nonogram, which will go here after neutralization. So we're gonna have oops, Nonogram. What were the color clues? No, what was the what was the phrasing of the um, question again? Let me take another look. Um, nonogram. What was one of the colors in the first right? Okay. What were the colors in the rows and columns? There we go. And then we want flags, which will go here. There. Flags. What were the country flags, the main flag, and the display number? All right, now if I refresh this, there we go, we have flags. All right, now I'm going to look at this in Chrome. 
in order to uh, make sure that everything fits on the page. Because, you know, as the, as the lists get longer, sometimes they hit the bottom of the page. So here we have that fits, that fits, everything fits just nicely. So flags was added on this page. Hmm. I am a bit surprised by this, but it fits on the page, so I'm going to keep it. All right, so let's generate the PDF. And then I'm going to run my little script here, which I have to update the manual that is bundled with the mod. So now if I were to uh, recompile and submit this, the souvenir support would be there. But, you know, in, in accordance with, I mean, you know, if I, if I do this like every day or every week, then people have to keep, you know, re reprinting the manuals. So I'm going to hold off on this and maybe implement a bit, a few more souvenir support later. Uh, so I'm not going to publish this just yet, but it's, it's good to know that it's working. I'll submit it in GitHub though. So for all of you who want to, um, you know, build your own version of the module that has the support, you can do so. Oh, this is very interesting. All right, let's submit this. Okay. All right, here's the updates to the HTML. Here's the updates to the source file. As you can see, the sprites were added, the flags and nonograms names were added. I added this get from thing for properties. And then here we have the uh, changes of the, you know what? I think I'm going to submit that separately because that's an unrelated change. So I'm just going to um, unstage these and then stage them separately. So unstage that, unstage that, unstage that. All right, so that adds, okay, well, Twitch plays active, I don't really care. Yeah, so add support for flags and nonogram, right? And then um, um, fix inconsistency, fix logging inconsistency. Let's call it that, there we go. So now that is on GitHub, so you can download it if you want. Or at least I think it'll be on GitHub soon. It's taking a while, probably because it's uploading all these flags sprites. I mean, I, it shouldn't really take this long. Let, let's actually see how, how much that is in terms of um, assets, um, the sprites, flags, let's see. That's only 140 kilobytes, that really shouldn't take long. And as I say this, it occurs to me that is, I didn't run these through PNG crush. So I'm actually going to do that now for each PNG file, run my little uh, PNG C CRFE, and that. All right, so this will take a moment, but I can run this in the background. And while that is running, I can tell you what I'm going to do next. So let's actually do doctor doctor. I think that one would be reasonably easy. So when you could ask what symptoms and diseases were listed, a combined question might be to ask what was listed as a symptom, but not a symptom of the treated disease. Those are all pretty good uh, ideas. So let's do those. All right, let's go to D, C, D. All right, uh, doctor, doctor. It's comes after O. Souvenir question. All right, so the first one was what symptoms were listed? What was, what, okay, which symptom, which, which of these symptoms was listed on Dr. Doctor? And we're going to list only four. Now, unfortunately, one of those symptoms, which is disappearance of the ears, has an extremely long name. But in this case, you know, it's I'm, I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to keep it in. You can also use sprites for the cube as you do the same for symbolic coordinates. Well, Riverboy, um, the difference is that uh, symbolic coordinates actually uses the sprites 
uh, as in the um, the actual module symbolic word. Actually, now that I say this, I don't know if that's true. I know that the cube uses the font, and the manual also uses the font. Um, and you know, th there is really no reason not to use the font since we have the font, right? To to, to um, generate sprites from the font is kind of redundant if you see what I mean. So anyway, so doctor doctor symptoms. All right, let's uh, take a look at uh, doctor doctor. Here we go, doctor doctor. Yes. So here is a list of all of the diseases with all of their symptoms. But yeah, but the cube has uh, more than, than symbolic coordinates. Symbolic coordinates has only like um, four, I think. And the cube has um, 14 or 16 something, right? So, I, you know, if I'm going to do this, I would rather change symbolic coordinates so that it uses the font rather than adding all of the sprites uh, for the cube. All right, so um, let's see. We want... So first of all, all of the diseases, here we go. And, oops, there we go. Um, okay, these are all of the diseases. Um, Which of these diseases was listed on Dr. Doctor, but not the one treated? Let's do that. Boink. Hey, long, long list. I like long lists. Long lists are cool. All right, now for the symptoms. All right, so for the symptoms, we want these. And we do not want these or these or these and then we want that gone then we want these to become a new line and we want all the double quotes gone like that and now we can uh, use this to get only the um, unique ones there you go so we have that then we that and then we have that oops that okay so symptoms these loss lots and lots of symptoms all right so what was the third question what was listed as a symptom but not a symptom of the treated disease that's actually not that different from just asking what was listed as a symptom. So I think I'll just stick with what symptoms were listed. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, I do think it's, it's a cool idea, but... Uh, Let's go here. So we have d dr constring doctor doctor. Now, what is the module type name? Okay, doctor doctor module. Module type is this. Boink. And let's go back to souvenir. Okay. Um. Alright, Doctor Doctor. Does Doctor Doctor have a solved? Yes, it does have a solved. Oops. 
is so high, it's already, uh, it has the same name as in fast math. All right, so screen. So instead of screen, I want, um, I want the listed uh, symptoms and diseases. Yes. Okay. Symptoms. Selectable symptoms and selectable diagnoses. These are the two that we want. And they are string arrays. This is super useful. This is super easy, trivial. I have five minutes left to do this. Can I do this? <laughs> Let's see. All right. Selectable symptoms. Symptoms. And then we have diagnoses, selectable diagnoses. Are those public? No, they're not public. No, they're not at all public. Let's go back. Right, and both of them are string arrays. There we go. Now, if comp equals null, or symptoms equals null, or diagnosis equals null, or if LD solved equals null, you break. Um, okay, and then while FLD solve, while not FLD solve get, uh, you'll return new wait for seconds point one. Um, and then we want the symptoms and the diagnosis. So, um, first of all, um, module solved ink save, uh, doctor, doctor, and then add questions module. First question is make question, uh, doctor, doctor, diseases, please. Uh, module key, doctor, doctor, format arguments are none. Uh, correct answers are, um, correct answers are the, the diseases, right? FLD diagnosis dot get, except I need to check those diagnoses. So, Symptoms equals FLD symptoms, right? If diagnosis equals null or symptoms equals null, then you'll break. Um, okay, this one doesn't have any preferred wrong answers, right? And then here we have the symptoms. Uh, doctor's symptoms, there you go. You know, and that, that should be it, right? We should be done already. So I'm quickly going to test that. Please recompile so the error disappears. Thank you. I have three minutes left. So let's uh, go to Steam. Get Dr. Doctor from here. Copy it here. Dr. Doctor. Perspective pegs, delete, flags, delete, um, run the game, right, whatever. Thank you. It didn't load any mods. And now it's loading mods. I have no idea why it did that. Right. Intense coding intensifies. Yes, it does. Two modules, no duplicates. I just need to make sure I'm up to date on Souvenir, which I believe I am. Um, I noticed chord qualities doesn't fade out the arrows indicating the given notes. Is that intentional? Um, uh, I'll, I'll have to take a look at that some other time. Uh, shit, I meant to open this. All right. So for Dr. Doctor, the diagnosis is color allergy, uh, which we treat with tear, tears of tar. Uh, follow up date is 27, five. And the uh, doses is two grams. Okay, we have an error. Souvenir, souvenir. Finished pro. Oh, there we go. 
Dr. Dr. Mojo has no fast math component. None of you noticed that and none of you said anything. All right, so what is it called? It's called Dr. Dr. Module, all right. Um, let's recompile that. All right, I've run out of time, <laughs> but I'm gonna quickly test this regardless. And by the way, I just realized that today is Wednesday, which means that tomorrow Noah and I will be doing the module showcase. So the Simon Singh stuff will either have to happen earlier or, you know, later on uh, Friday um, or maybe Saturday. So be prepared for it uh, to take a while. But let's uh, check this out. We have two grams. Um, Right, this time we didn't get the error message, so that's good. Narcolization, vitamin V. And the follow-up date is still 2715. Uh, 27.5, excuse me. Which of these diseases was listed? Now let's see if I can still change this. No, I cannot. So that's good. Alright, which of these diseases was listed? Narcolization is not there. Whoa, it is there. Aha, which of these was listed, but not the one treated. Hang on, that should not have appeared though, because I gave it the list of the ones that were listed. So that's a bug. Um, let's see. So for the um, symptoms, let's see. Symptoms listed are chills, throat irritation, constipation, cold hands, fatigue, sleepiness, and numbness. Uh, okay, so it did that correctly. None of these were actually on the module. Now, which of these diseases was listed, but not the one treated? Ah, okay, it shows narcolization as the correct answer. So I need to exclude the one that was the right answer. That's what the problem was. Let's see, quack rounds is not listed. It listed only HRV and Huntington disease. So, so it is actually working. It's just that it just needs to exclude the right answer. All right, so let's check out what the right answer is. Um, selectable treatments, selectable doses, selected blah, 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 set texts. Um, wasn't there somewhere here that was somewhere like, calculate answer, there we go, answer one, answer two. Um, uh, okay, where does it use these? Selectable doses. Well, that's interesting. Does that mean that it recalculates the answer later? Probably. Okay, so in that case, instead of looking at where it saves the answer, I will look at the actual text mesh which displays the answer. So that would be um, here in set texts, it says uh, diagnose, diagnose text, <laughs> all right. Right, so that's the one. So diagnose text is a text mesh, which is public. All right, so let's go here. Uh, var ld that get field text mesh that is public true. And then here, okay, and then uh, all right, var text mesh or diagnose text, I suppose. Um, diagnose text dot get, and then if that is null, also bail out. And now diagnoses except uh, diagnose text dot text uh, dot to array. Okay. Let's recompile that. It just occurred to me that I never tested the position of the flags along with the Twitch place numbers. I'm going to have to test that. Um, but for now, let's test the uh, Dr. Doctor. Um, 
Six milligrams, yep. Yeah. Red Dead for chronic talk. And 27.5, of course, I got it wrong. Uh, click. Okay, so chronic talk was the right answer. So let's check which diseases, but not the one treated. Okay, so chronic talk is not there. All right, that should be fine then. Throat irritation, was throat irritation listed? Yes. Was numbness, nausea, and headache not listed? Yes, that is correct, okay. I am relatively convinced that this is working, which means souvenir.html, uh, here, C, D, doctor, doctor, which diseases and symptoms were listed. All right, and then, uh, oh, I hovered the module maze icons over the TV numbers. I didn't think it would fit well. Um, oh, don't worry about that. Um, I'm I'm gonna test it, and uh, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. Souvenir. Um, create that PDF. Souvenir. Before I do that, let me check that the See, the second page is getting a bit full because we added both flags and Dr. Doctor on the second page. So I'm actually going to move uh, listening to the next page. Right, listening. Oh, there. Let's move that to here. Right, so listening is now on the next page. And while I'm at it, I guess I can move orientation cube to the next page as well. There you go, because that page had a lot of space. Okay, so that fits, that fits, that fits, that fits, and that fits. All right, save. Souvenir.pdf. And souvenir. Oh yeah, and the uh, JSON, obviously, Dr. Dr. JSON now has supported, there we go, let's run the uh, contain web, come on, don't take so long to compile, thank you, run that, and that's that done, all right, thank you all for your uh, attention, I guess um, that's basically it, all right, Dr. Doctor, we can add that. Add Dr. Doctor. But before I do that, let's go here and update the manual. Bang. All right, the Dr. Doctor is there and listening and orientation cube have been moved to the next page. And that's now on GitHub. Thank you very much for your attention. And I will hopefully see you again next time when I finish the Simon Sings rule seed support, which I will do on the C-Sharp side. And until then, um, yeah, thank you for watching and I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions, feel free to um, contact me on Discord, obviously, or leave a comment if, this is, if you're watching this on YouTube sometime later. Um, I'm gonna have a nice dinner and watch a movie now, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.